Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctish channel. Few military aircraft throughout history have captured the interest and attention of the world quite like the British Harrier jump jet. First introduced in the late 1960s, the Harrier was the first VTOL, or vertical takeoff and landing plane, to attain widespread use worldwide. The modern variant, designated the AV-8B Harrier II, entered production in the early 1980s. has since become a favorite among the United States Marine Corps. As the term jump jet implies, what really separates the Harrier from other aircraft is its ability to redirect engine exhaust downward. producing lift so that it can take off vertically, not unlike a helicopter. This system also allows for stall, or short takeoff and landing procedures. Which require far less runway space than standard military planes. Once in the air, the AV-8B can reach speeds of over 650 miles per hour across a combat radius of 300 nautical miles. These second-generation Harriers are capable of a wide range of missions overseas and on land. This is part of the reason they have been so prized by the U.S. Marines. Though the Harrier looks no different than your average fighter jet at first glance, its entire design has been engineered around the aircraft's vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. This includes landing gear that is attached to the wings, as well as the fuselage. This offers additional stability when the Harrier is maneuvering on the ground, but also supports the aircraft during vertical takeoff. The massive Pegasus engine features four adjustable nozzles and two large intakes on either side of the fuselage. These intakes are designed this way to capture more air, allowing the Harrier to generate thrust without forward motion when taking off. The pilot faces the wind to maximize airflow, directs the nozzles downward, and engages the throttle pushing the aircraft upwards. During vertical landings, the pilot needs only to reduce thrust to bring the Harrier back to the flight deck. Despite widespread use in the Falklands War, both Gulf Wars, and many other major conflicts, the Harrier II has a reputation for being difficult to fly, as well as somewhat maintenance intensive. The landing gear, for instance, features hydraulics to absorb the added impact of vertical landings. These must be inspected and maintained regularly to reduce the chances of damaging the fuselage. The same goes for the VTOL components, including the rotational vents. Of course, all military jets must undergo regular inspection and maintenance cycles to ensure the safe operation of the aircraft. This covers everything from the plane's structure and engines to mission-critical features. 
like weapons, avionics, and communication technology. From a purely military standpoint, the Harrier has always been a formidable foe. Even before the aircraft was redesigned into the AV-8B, it was capable of adopting multiple offensive and defensive roles, handling everything from air-to-air -air combat to air support and air defense suppression. In terms of weapons, the Harrier II is capable of carrying and deploying a wide range of ordnance. Thanks to its six underwing hardpoints, it can utilize everything from air-to-air -air AMRAAM missiles to rockets and even bombs when required. The aircraft also has a 25mm five-barrel rotary cannon mounted under the left side of the fuselage. During combat, the Harrier is capable of a unique maneuver known as viffing, or vectoring in forward flight. This is when the pilot rotates the thrust nozzles during flight to allow faster turning and braking to evade enemies. Though it is often described as relatively unforgiving to fly, the Harrier II is very popular among the pilots assigned to them. That said, the Marine Corps intends to phase out the Harrier II by the mid-2020s. While it is not as iconic as the Harrier II, the Bell Boeing B-22 Osprey may actually be one of the most versatile vertical takeoff and landing aircraft ever designed. A collaboration between one of the world's biggest helicopter designers and one of its most successful plane manufacturers, the Osprey is the perfect marriage between both types of aircraft. It can easily be recognized thanks to its two massive wing-mounted turbofan engines. That said, several variants of the Osprey are in service worldwide, including the CV-22, which is utilized by the U.S. Air Force for Special Operations Command. This version of the Osprey has a higher fuel capacity as well as several auxiliary tanks for long-range missions. So the Osprey is used as our vertical lift uh, 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 infiltration, exfiltration platform. It's primarily designed to be able to uh, for us to be able to reach out in a longer distance. So the Osprey offers a lot more range and flexibility for vertical lift versus a traditional helicopter. What we offer is the ability to take off, fly extremely long distances, and be able to still land vertically as a heli traditional helicopter once we get to that location. Uh, typically, we can be at least twice as fast as some of the other rotary assets, so and we're able to reach out and, and, and do the mission a lot faster and a lot farther than a typical helicopter. It also has in-air refueling capabilities further extending its already generous operational range. Not to be outdone, the U.S. Marine Corps has their own variant of the Osprey known as the MV-22. This version of the aircraft is specifically designed as an assault transport for troops, equipment, and supplies. Thanks to its VTOL capabilities, the MV-22 can operate from virtually any airfield or ship flight deck, just like a helicopter. However, once airborne, it can safely reach speeds that the average helicopter could never approach. For instance, the Marines largely intend the MV-22 to replace the CH-46 Sea Knight as a medium lift assault support helicopter before the CH-46 retired was been in service since the 60s.
where the Sea Knight topped out at around 166 miles per hour, the Osprey can travel at nearly twice that speed, up to almost 315 miles per hour. This helps ensure that troops and supplies get where they're going faster and more safely. As with any other aircraft, regular maintenance is a big part of the operational life of the MV-22. And since the aircraft must always be ready to perform in case of an emergency, this type of maintenance is generally performed every single day. Here, Marines from Marine Medium Tilt Rotor Squadron 162 have removed the rotors so that they can better access the engines. They also take great care to clean the aircraft to prevent the buildup of any corrosive materials. Sand and dust must be removed to ensure top performance. The same goes for the rotors, to reduce the chance of accidents both on the ground and in the air. While not necessarily new to the aviation scene, the Osprey is a perfect example of practical engineering. Its tilt rotor design allows it the versatility the U.S. military needs to go wherever they're needed quickly. Regardless of whether or not there's a runway nearby. As if that weren't enough, the Osprey has one more trick up its sleeve. That is, its wings can actually turn and become parallel with the plane's fuselage. As it does this, the propellers fold into a line. This makes it much easier for the aircraft to be stored aboard a packed carrier. It also makes for a rather impressive display whenever the Marines take the MV-22 out on a mission. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.